mm-hmm. 2014, writes the book at 16, comes out when she's 15 years old, mm-hmm. um, in the middle of her her teen years. Um, for everyone's understanding that hasn't watched the show, uh, I Am Jazz, uh, uh, and knows of her, but doesn't really know her story. Um, uh, did Jazz go through the kind of thing that LGBT uh, frequently go through the bullying and mm-hmm. uh, pressure in school. What what was her teenage years like? She's mm-hmm. living in the public life, yeah. But her private life and school and friends mm-hmm. and people around her. How was that? Um, there were many hardships because she socially transitioned at the age of five in kindergarten, and at that time she was just a little kid and she was very open and would tell other children, you know, I used to be a boy and now I'm a girl. And that didn't always go over well, mostly with administration. Um, So right from the start, there there were no bathrooms. She was not allowed to use bathrooms. And then a few years later, she wasn't allowed to play soccer. So she went through all that, being banned from sports at the age of eight, being bullied, being told no bathrooms until she was 11, she was finally able to use bathrooms. So she was fighting, we were fighting. And um, it continued on through her teenage years where she was excluded from, you know, social events where her friends would go with boys and they didn't want to have anything to do with the trans girl. So being that she transitioned so young, she had a lot of years of, of struggling and obstacles placed in front of her. But she made it through. She's very resilient and she taught me how to be resilient. Well, and there and it's a great transition to what I think is so fascinating in Jazz Jennings' story, which is Jeanette Jennings. <laughs> um, you watch this transition where your eight year old, your 10 year old, your 12 year old, your 15 year old is facing this kind of pressure. Uh, yes, uh, there's the choice to be the voice and the activist mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. YouTube star and the influencer, but uh were you were you confident that that jazz was going to be okay in navigating all of these things that she was facing you never can be 100 percent sure how your kid is going to turn out um i do know that we never ever pushed or encouraged her to do things we supported her when she started the youtube channel that was that was her idea we didn't say oh we think you should do this and that she's always been open to being a spokesperson Uh, at at a young age, she won an award and they wanted her to speak in front of thousands of people. And she's like, yeah, I'll do that where other kids may be afraid. So, you know, we never wanted her to do anything or feel uncomfortable doing anything, but she is a tough cookie. She's strong and she does, she's got a strong sense of justice Mm -hmm. and she saw what was happening. These things are wrong. And I want to tell people the kids like us, are real and we just want to be happy and there's speeches of her saying this at like 11 with braces on you know leave us alone we just want to be happy where do you think that that came from i think back to when i was 11 and i just i can't imagine how dumb i was at 11. (laughs) Uh, where did that come from that she was able to do that i think she was born this way i truly feel she was born with a sense of confidence a sense of self she knew what she wanted and she went out after it. People, you know, credit me. Oh, you know, you did this, you did that. No, she taught me how to be more resilient. She taught me to have a thicker skin and not worry about what other people think. So it's just in her DNA. She's outspoken. She doesn't care what other people think. She never really cared. If so-and-so doesn't want to be my friend, I don't want to be their friend. Hmm. But it, you know, it did affect her. She still was a child, but she wanted this. She wanted to help other people. Even to this day, she's like, I just want to help people. I Mm. love helping people. It's a great, uh, a great charge and a challenge to the LGBTQ community with Mm -hmm. what we're facing today. One last thing that uh, I want to talk about before she becomes adult in 2018, she goes through uh, the uh, reassignment Mm -hmm. surgery. Mm -hmm. Now, do I have this correct that she had the reassignment surgery? She was still a minor 17. She was like a few months shy of 18. Yeah. Because she was going away to college. So that's why we did it right before college. So she would have time to heal. Um, So, you know, it's a little bit of semantics there at the age. But yeah, I mean, she was a minor, but almost a major. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And and I understand what you just said. But I I want to zero in. It it seems like in the trans community, the two big uh, political uh, things um, uh, started with bathrooms, North Mm -hmm. Carolina. Yes. yes. uh, Years ago. And... um, and um, um, healthcare for minors under 18. Um, Jazz uh, goes through a reassignment uh, still at 17, all virtually 18. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us about 
the process of jazz going through that transition, getting ready for college and, and mm -hmm. going through the medical care that jazz went through? Positive experience? Was mm -hmm. it a challenging time? Mm -hmm. How how was it? When uh, the morning of jazz's surgery, she woke up and she was euphoric. Like you can see her, we have footage of her dancing. This is my day. No fear, no regrets. She went in there and was the happiest she's ever been. And even though it didn't go as smoothly as we would have liked, she was her happiest ever those months after she had the surgery. I mean, just, um, and to this day, she loves her body. No regrets. Uh, she says, I love who I am. I would hate, you know, having that old body. I don't want that. I, I love the way I am now. So um, best thing that ever happened to her, she will tell you that. Okay, and, and her reaction. And she goes in for um, uh, the medical care uh, that she underwent. How did, uh, how did mom do? I did very well in the beginning, but when um, there were some complications, of course, this is my baby, you know, she has to go back in to surgery. And I, I didn't like that, of course, but it all turned out in the end. Okay. But at the time, you know, your parent, your kids having surgery for anything, you're going to be a nervous wreck. Um, and I, I made it through cause I have a, uh, in my support system of my family out there and we had each other, we were all there together when she went through this and, um, that love we have for, for her guided us through but she was happy and that's all you want is for your kid to be happy. And she truly was. Yeah. And all of the political stuff that we're watching here in Florida and, and around the country, this is one of the primary things uh, that they're focusing on now, which is that um, uh, under age and in some definitions, that's up to age 26. Some of the laws that are passing are saying you can't make a decision in, in transition if you're 24 years old. And so there's not consistency mm -hmm. uh, to what we're watching. But what, what are your thoughts about what we're watching specifically related to this, to the medical health care, mm -hmm. hormones for minors, um, and, and all of the related issues? As a parent who has literally watched the documentation of this in your life mm -hmm. and your child, what, do, what are your thoughts about uh, the decision-making of mm -hmm. uh, trans health care, especially for minors? These decisions are harming children, and that is massive. They don't realize the effects, the ripple that this will have on the lives of kids that just want to be themselves. Jazz went on hormones. She went on hormone blockers. She developed into a lovely young lady. If you look at her brothers, they're burly, they're hairy, and my husband is hairy. Like She didn't want to look like that. It saved her life. She will tell you, without the medical intervention, she would not be with us right now. Mm. And there are kids out there like that, that they need gender affirming care and people are putting a stop to it. They don't really even know what it is or haven't talked to a transgender youth to see how this has made them the people they are today. They go from being depressed, suicidal to being happy and leading wonderful lives. And I have story after story I can share with you of kids that went through the whole gender affirming care, the hormones and are just absolutely succeeding and having fantastic lives. And, you know, you don't see all of those stories because they no, not everybody shares their story on TV. Uh, you know, some do like us, but you don't see it every day. So that's why we share Jazz's story to let people know it is okay to have hormones. It's okay to have blockers. It's okay to have the surgery. She has her ups and downs, but you know what? She is a happy girl who is thriving and can't wait to embrace life even more.